Welcome back gamers, the doctor's in. We have a PRGE 2017 pickups video. I managed to trade for a lot of really cool stuff and I wanna show you everything I got. Let's take a look. Uh, one of my favorite items, this is a uh, repro of Ghostbusters 2. It only came out in Japan. And this was done by Mr. Wizards, Jared, uh, one of my good buddies, Johnny, he's friends with him. Uh, he had this stuff at my booth. And ever since I saw him do this on Instagram, I wanted to get a copy. He has two versions, green and pink, just like the movie. Um, has a little case and a Ghostbusters 2 backdrop. And I believe these are glow in the dark, if not UV sensitive. Now I could have made this game myself, but I really wanted to get the clear case with the slime going on. And Jared actually had a hard time getting cases when he ordered um, the company that supplies him was still about a week out. And that was a few days before the show. So I sent him a priority box out with about 20 shells. Uh, luckily, I had the exact same shells that he uses. I had them in stock, so I was able to hook them up for basically at cost. And I got myself this really awesome game. I played it before, but might revamp it, try it again for Halloween. It looks really cool. I might try to figure out how to wire up some LEDs inside also. Look really good in the top loader. Another game that he does is the AM2R. Now, this is actually the official version. Um, the project got pulled down, as most people know from Nintendo, but the people who worked on the game liked Jared's product so much that they actually signed off on him uh, doing the distribution of the physical media. And I think he only brought five to the show. They all sold out really fast and it's super cool. I didn't realize this was a thing printed directly onto the DVD. Uh, it's not a sticker, it's right on there. Also you got an insert, and I believe the soundtrack, the artwork on this is incredible. It's super high quality. It looks like it's reversible. You can switch out, switch out. It's just, man, this is next level stuff. And it's so, so awesome. This looks like an actual retail release of a game. If you didn't know going into it. So I need to spend some time, sit down, play this. I might let's play this if there's enough interest. But I love Metroid and the quality on this, next to none. Going on talking about more homebrews and repros, we have the Cowlitz Second Adventure. Now this is a homebrew. Um, it's a project that was done with Alan Hancock and all the proceeds for this go to charity. So I always love giving them that. I had the first one and all the other John's games. But when I saw this, I knew I had to have it. One of my favorite NES games ever is Bubble Bobble, Bubble Bobble 2. And it has a kind of that similar feeling. And there's a limited run for the show. They sold out in about 90 minutes. And John really hooked it up. Also, John Rose looked out for me. Uh, I told John I needed to get a copy at least, put one aside, but they just, people were buying it up so fast, he didn't get the chance to put one aside. So he actually saved me the demo copy that they had at their booth. So when the show shut down on Sunday, they came over and was able to get a copy. And I'll try to show some gameplay of this. I'm really looking forward to sitting down and playing it. Another homebrew, there's a booth next to me. Uh, they had a Genesis homebrew. This is, I think, Berserker. It's supposed to be like a shmup, but also kind of like a puzzle game at the same time. Uh, I was trying to get like at least one uh, homebrew or repro for the show. Something that has the year on it. And I picked this up first. I really couldn't find anything at first. And what makes this special is it uses 3D glasses. So it kind of jumps off the page, comes with the manual. They're all numbered. 
uh, 1 to 30. It's number 12. Um, the only thing that's kind of lacking is the label. I mean, it's not even rounded. The quality on this label, it's not up to par. I would know. I made a lot of labels in my day. So I might reach out to them and see if they want to do another run or step up their game. Hopefully this is gameplay is really good. Uh, I was talking to the designer. Uh, they do a guarantee on all their games. If you don't like it, you can actually return it and get a full refund. So we're gonna find out in the next week or two if this is any good. I got a box. Pokemon Stadium. Uh, now George and his brother and George's girlfriend end up staying with me and they're going for a complete 64 set. Coming into the show, they needed 14 games kind of crazy. I still need about 114 games. Well, they, they managed to knock it all down to just four games. And coming into the show, they also had a deal for a bunch of boxes that they got the hookup on. And Pokemon Stadium was a double. So they did a label upgrade, basically, or box upgrade. And I got a copy of Pokemon Stadium. Had the game, but not the box. Uh, for me, I'm trying to go through and find boxes that I had as a kid or games that are really memorable to me and get the boxes for those. I want to do at least one shelf of just all those boxes. Uh, one of the first things you can see when you come in my game room so you can look at that. And that really just like pulls on the nostalgia of these really cool games. Anyways, this box is a lot larger than most of the 64 boxes. Uh, I think it had to come with a transfer pack. First time I saw Pokemon Stadium was at the Washington Square Mall. They were doing an event and they were passing out Mews. So this was like a red and blue event. And they had Pokemon Stadium on display. Some people could try to play it, but the line was crazy big. And it was a summer event, I want to say. Got my Mew. But this box is awesome. I still need to sit down and put more time in Pokemon Stadium 2. Actually, I haven't played that. But Red and Blue is my jam. And then I really haven't played any Pokemon games until just recently. I really like the Aloha region. So it's going on the shelf. Maybe I can find a Pokemon Stadium 2 box. Uh, one of the very few games I bought for myself at the show was uh, 98 Blades of or NHL Blades of Steel 99. I didn't pay five dollars. Sunday pickup, paid about two bucks. Just one of those I got to check off the list to get closer to that 296 N64 games. Not sure if it's any good. Clean label though. More trades. We got Twin B, um, Super Famicom Twin B, and Poppin' Twin B Adventure. Awesome games. Um, it's one of the games I really enjoy playing, and I wanted a Super Famicom copy, and it kind of worked out well for me. I was at my booth, and Scout came up, and she wanted, I think, Final Fantasy 1, 2, 3 on Super Famicom. I had as a set. So she offered this, and three, like, first party uh, Mario DS titles. Uh, I felt like I was definitely getting the better end of the deal, but she she wanted to trade in a lot of stuff for this uh, set of Final Fantasy games. Both walked away happy, and it was just super random that she offered this first, not knowing that I was looking for one, and it's got a little lower in want. Um, I didn't actually think I'd be able to find one without actually having to pay some money for it, so being able to pick this up in the trade, awesome. Super Paperboy 2, I needed one for my set. I had one that label wasn't too good. Um, this came in to be in a trade. I'm doing a special project um, for a two player uh, hack of a game. Um, something we didn't get. Uh, unfortunately, new background, I just moved. Don't ever do that before the show. I moved about six weeks before the show. Um, so I'm looking for the, the PCB of, where I ended up hacking it, running a bunch of wires for this game. So I need to get this out. I think I'm gonna see them in January. So we're gonna start unboxing some stuff besides video games, or I guess video games. It was super random. I was signing up for the swap meet come January. I think it's gonna be January 20th. Well, Richard came by to talk to me about it because he's helped coordinating it. 
he had his trade box and I ended up getting a copy of Little Mas Little Nemo the Dream Master. Uh, came to CIB. I had the cart already because I had it as a kid. This game is awesome. Uh, the box has a little love, a little wear on it, but this is one of those boxes that I wanted. Um, I was looking at almost like 30, 35 CIB. Uh, I sold off the game I got in the trade and I'm just really looking forward to having this. I have most of the Capcom purple boxes or the Disney afternoon boxes. Artwork on this is awesome. In fact, I just heard about a hack that someone did that I want to check out. Basically, uh, it removes all of the searching for keys or searching around in the game. It makes it more true, so it's just a platformer. It's all going to be a lot quicker. Also, you start off with like the final weapon, so you actually have something to shoot. And it kind of just changes the gameplay dramatically. I want to see if it makes it more fun. I love this as a kid, but now it... It's not that it aged well, it just takes a little bit longer to get through. And that hack might do really well, but... Little Nemo, Dream Master, they go live on the shelf of Pokemon Stadium. Uh, super random, Cabela's Big Game Hunter. Uh, I made the comment the other day that I was trying to look for another subset to collect, and one thing I really like is light gun games. And I was in the Portland Retro Gamer group on Facebook trying to get suggestions, and someone suggested a Cabela's game. And uh, my buddy Johnny's co-host with their Bit Space and Baskets podcast, Shane, had this, and I was just asking him how much he wanted. He was jumped in on my booth and was selling stuff again this year. And uh, Shane just hooked it up and gave it to me. I didn't even look up to see what it's worth. But I like the light gun games. I have some of the more money games, but I've been looking for small light gun games for the Wii. I don't think Wii U had any. Let me know if you have any recommendations for light gun games. I like that arcade style. Now last year I picked up Power Up. It's a great read. Uh, by Chris Kohler. He's the tech editor for Wired Magazine. And I ended up seeing him again this year and I got him to sign it. It's pretty cool. It says, To Doc Ness, enjoy Chris Kohler. Uh, highly recommend this. The newer versions of the book I think came out in the last year or so. There's a good piece in the back. I want to say it talks about Awada. It talks a lot about Nintendo and uh, the inner workings. I'd look for that version. But if you haven't picked this up already, Silver Cheap it's on Amazon. And I think he came out in a new book. What's it? It's like Final Fantasy V. I'm not sure what it all encompasses besides that small version of Final Fantasy made its whole story. But I'm going to see if I can get a copy of that too. It's power up. And lastly, I got this star. I just love how it looks. I mean, it, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but there's a gold foil in there. It's really shiny. And I need something for the wall of the game room. Uh, I worked out a trade. Let's see. I think I did a uh, Mega Man 2 uh, fan-made repro. So we traded that for this wood project. It's schlacked, so it's very shiny, very sturdy. Um, they had one that was similar was the Mega Man falling while shooting pose, but that was about 180. So I'm getting this. I think he was selling this for around 45, 35. And it's something I might be able to look at and do in the future, see how it looks. If I enjoy them, I might just turn out a batch for trade bait or just doing it for the game room. I'm not looking to sell these, but I really like how this works. It looks awesome. All right. Well, thanks guys for watching. I know it's been a really long time since I had an update. I've been really busy this past year, just getting to a new place. It's probably going to be a couple months before I get my game room set up, get my shelves built. Um, I'm trying to see how the winter goes with the water and make sure I don't have any like moisture issues, any water coming in before I unbox everything right now. Like my whole collection is in totes. It's all sealed up, it's off the ground. And I wanna try playing more games. I'm gonna 
put that John Hancock's game in, see how it works, and maybe try to be able to do some more Let's Plays. But I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you for subscribing. Until then, I'm the Doc. Take it easy.